With a look at the rule variations for co-rec flag football and intramural sports at Florida State University, I'm Director of Intramural Sports David Peters. We're going to walk you through how co-rec differs from our men's and women's flag football. Two more players on the field, a couple of restrictions for the guys participating in the sport, more points when the ladies score a touchdown, all of that coming up in this podcast for co-rec flag football. First of all, how many people are on the field for each team? Well, in co-rec, it's eight on eight. So it's one more than our standard men's and women's leagues. And we have a couple of combinations of players in which are legal, the rest are not allowed. So if you're playing with the standard number of eight, that's four males and four females on the field at a time. You couldn't play with five and three or six and two, that's not allowed. So four and four. If you're playing with seven players, it's four of one gender and three of the other. And if you're playing with six, you must have an even number of males and females, that would be three and three. We don't allow four and two or two and four here at FSU. So these are the four legal combinations of players that you'll need to participate in a game of co-rec flag football at Florida State. Also note that here at FSU and across the country in co-rec flag football, you need five players on the line of scrimmage. You have eight players out there. Instead of the four that you would have in men's and women's, you're going to have to have those five. Our officials will help you out and make sure that you get the right number of players on the line of scrimmage like they would in any game, but know that you need to draw up your plays with five stationary players uh, on the line of scrimmage at the time of the snap. Also, the mercy rule in co-rec is 25 points or more at the two-minute mark of the second half, so more than a regular men's and women's game. That's because there are more points involved when the ladies score. Right, let's take a look at scoring right now. Females, when they score a touchdown, that is running across the goal line or receiving a pass in the end zone uh, for that touchdown, nine points. So instead of six, getting a couple of bonus points, we'll get nine when the females are scoring a touchdown. Also, when a female throws a legal forward pass, in a play that results in an offensive touchdown, then we also have a point value of nine. So there's a couple of ways in which you can get those nine points. All the rest of the touchdowns that are scored are worth six. So a guy throwing to a guy for a touchdown pass, runs it across the goal line, uh, that would be just six points uh, in a co-reg game. So getting the ladies involved means a couple of more points on the scoreboard. Now your point afters are going to count the same. We'll go for one, two, or three, just like a men's or women's game. Uh, and so no, no bonus there for getting the ladies involved, but you will see how ladies have to be involved, for example, based on our open and close status. And we'll describe that here coming up in just a sec. What are the keys to co-rec? Well, one, females pretty much have no playing restrictions. This is for the ladies and getting them involved in our co-rec game. Doesn't mean they can tackle, uh, but our females can run the ball, they can throw and catch the ball pretty much anywhere on the field. The guys, not so much. Males can never run the ball across the line, or be at least the first person to do that, unless they catch a pass. And we'll talk about how catching a legal forward pass makes all the difference in a co-rec game here at FSU. Co consecutive male-to-male -male pass completions are also not permitted, and that will be a foul as well. That will make sense in just a sec. So let's say you're having a run play where there's no forward pass involved. Backwards passes and laterals are all running plays. But a forward pass, one that goes towards your line of scrimmage, uh, would make it a pass play. So if that is not part of the play, then we're going to call it a run play. You can't have a male run play. At least a male cannot be the first person to cross the line with the ball in a strictly run play. That's going to be a foul every time. So you might as well mark off male handoffs in your particular uh, playbook. You're not going to have a male quarterback scramble across the line of scrimmage. So uh, if they're getting uh, rushed in the backfield, they're going to have to pass it because they're not permitted to run across the line. The ladies, however, no restrictions. So ladies can take a handoff and run across the line of scrimmage. That's okay. If they're a quarterback, for example, and they are rushed in the backfield, they can scramble across the line. Again, freedom for the ladies with regards to run plays. But if you complete a legal forward pass anywhere on the field, then these restrictions go away. So if we have a pass from a male to a male behind the line of scrimmage, then that male can go ahead and run it across the line because he has already caught a pass. We've changed it from a run play to a pass play. So strictly run plays have those restrictions, but involving a pass makes a difference. Now, prior to every down, our officials in a co-rec game are going to announce two things. One, the down, so second down, for example. And then they're going to announce either open or close. And that makes a difference on who can be involved if you decide to throw a forward pass in that play. On an open status play, all legal forward passes are permitted. So you can have a male throw to a male, that's okay. Male to female, female to male, or female to female. All those combinations, pretty much anyone throwing and catching the ball in open status is all right. Closed status is more difficult because we've taken out male to male forward passes. In other words, you can't have this, it will be an automatic penalty if that occurs. So if we announce a play is closed, then you have a male quarterback, he cannot throw to a male receiver. The only other receivers that are eligible if he's gonna throw the ball are going to be ladies out there on the field. Now, if you have a female quarterback, well, then you don't have the first half of this, so a female can throw to a male or a female and be okay on closed status. Let's walk you through. If we announce that the play is open on a particular down, then the play that is not permitted on this down is that a male runner cross the line during a run play. So prior to the reception of a legal forward pass any, by any player, no male runner 
can be the ball carrier and be the first player to cross that line of scrimmage with the ball. That's going to be a foul, even if he runs back behind the line and loses yards. If we haven't had a pass involved on an open play and that male runs across the line, we're going to throw a flag and call that illegal male advancement. Now the play continues until someone is deflagged and the whistle is blown, but it's going to be a foul uh, regardless if they gain or lose yards on the play. Now when we have closed status plays, uh, that male advancement rule, it's in effect for everything. So it's in effect on open and in effect in closed, the males can't run across the line. Check. Also on a closed play, a male player may not complete a pass to a male receiver anywhere on the field. Down the field, two feet in front of them, any kind of forward pass that goes from a male to a male is also going to be an automatic foul. We call that a legal male pass reception. Doesn't matter if they are dropped or deflagged for a loss, for example, or if they gain 10 yards. If we have a male to male pass on a closed play that's forward, a forward pass, uh, that's going to be a foul on those particular cases. So those are the fouls that we have and the things you need to be marking out of your rule book in a co-reg game. Illegal male advancement on all plays, that male run, always no good, and illegal male pass reception on closed plays. Those are the two co-reg exclusive fouls that only exist in a co-reg game, and the penalty enforcement for both fouls is five yards from the line of scrimmage and loss of down. So if it was a first down play and you committed one of these fouls, we would mark off five yards from the original line of scrimmage, and we would also uh, call a loss of down, which means the next down will be second. On most penalties, you get a chance to repeat the down. But in these cases, in co-rec, it's loss of down, and we move to the next down. So it's, it's a tough penalty. So make sure that you're taking these out of your playbook. Now, how do we go from open to closed status? We talked about that, but how does that work? Well, it affects pass plays only. So again, run plays not a, not a factor here, but on pass plays, you go from open to closed when you have a male-to-male -male legal forward pass completion that either gains or loses yardage. Regardless of where they end up on the field, if we had a male throw three yards to a, another male who gets tackled behind the line or runs 20 yards down the field on an open play, then the next play will be considered closed. And we stay on closed status until some a different kind of pass occurs that moves us back to open. To move back to open, you need to involve a lady in a forward pass. That's either male to female, so catching that pass or throwing it. A female quarterback throws to a male receiver or all ladies in the play, quarterback to a receiver, and on closed, must gain positive yards. So happening behind the line and they get deflagged for no gain or a loss of yardage does not change it back to open. You really have to get some positive stuff happening here to move it back to open. So it's easy to go to close because you can lose yards, but it's harder to get back to open. And open, as you will find, is just gives you more plays in the playbook because you can include those male passes, male to male passes, as part of your open uh, status playbook. Now at the start of every half, after a touchdown or a change of possession, after an interception, the initial first down is going to be open, but not every first down. So if you get another first down down the field, we just continue to the open and close cycle like I just mentioned on the previous slide. But if you get uh, a change of possession or you start a period that, as the team in possession of the ball, that first down will be considered open. And as I mentioned, following a touchdown, uh, a point after is open or closed based on the previous play. So we don't have a particular set way to determine uh, for example, who scores makes a difference in point afters. Instead, uh, we will rule that point after just like another down. Our officials, again, will help you through that and make sure that you're aware of what you can do on the point after, whether you need to involve a female or, or how you need to draw up that play to score those points. Run plays do not affect open and closed status, so having a female run the ball 20 yards downfield on a closed play, the next play is still closed because closed has only to do with passes, so that doesn't relieve that restriction. So you got to involve a pass to change the status of a play. And the passes have to be forward, again, towards your line of scrimmage. Backward passes and laterals to the side are considered run plays. They don't have any effect on this uh, rule or effect on those particular penalties. Open and close status is determined by the initial pass and catch of a play. So, for example, if I, as a male, throw to a, another male and then he hands off to a female who runs down the field for 20 yards, that's still a male-to-male -male pass because that was the initial pass and catch. doesn't matter who ended up with the ball at the end of the play. Penalty enforcement does not affect open and closed status. Our officials will help you out through those issues as you're out on the field. Our correct changes, at least from two years ago, these are the same rules that were used in 2010. So in 2011, Florida State correct is the same as it was in 2010, but they are a little bit different from across the country. Male pass receptions behind the line are now legal. Uh, what we have found in our first year is that we're having fewer penalties. We're having more legal plays and surprisingly, less confusion out of the field. Certainly flag football is already a difficult sport. We're trying to keep the co-rec version as simplified as possible while maintaining a little bit of why co-rec rules exist. But we've found at least that uh, it's easier to play, and I think that's been some good news. New penalty enforcements are consistent across both of those co-rec penalties. That five yards and loss of down uh, are the same for both of the co-rec fouls. It's a little bit easier to enforce, and so that's been a benefit too. 
If you're confused, if you need some more examples, check our website, fsu.campusrec.com slash IM has some more details about the co-rec rules. You can give us a call in our office or also drop us an email from our website and we'll try to answer your questions to make sure that your team is ready to go this season. For Intramural Sports at Florida State University, I'm Director of Intramural Sports, David Peters. Good luck and have fun this Intramural Sports season.